Hi, I'm Jacqueline or Galacticat and that is my cat's butt. <laughs> Up until now I've only done speed paint videos so this will be the first one where I talk, so bear with me. In today's video I'm going to be testing out professional watercolours and seeing how they compare to my old cheap paints I used when I was a beginner. I am still relatively new to watercolour, I've only been doing it for just over a year and a half now I think, but I didn't know what the difference was between cheap and expensive supplies and how they might affect my work. I also didn't know if I'd be any good at it either, so I didn't want to spend a lot of money on expensive watercolours right off the bat if they were just going to gather dust. This is the first palette that I bought. I got it from a local arts and crafts store for about 20 bucks, but there were cheaper ones without the box. I then later added the Ganzai Tambi ones up here. I hope I said that correctly. I probably completely butchered it and I just blue tacked those in. I quickly realized that I loved watercolor. I had used acrylic before, so it was quite different. And I started researching and finding more resources on how to use it properly and build my skill. That's when I found classes through Emma at Black Chalk Co. I did a few of her classes through her old Poletica website, but she now has the Watercolor Academy, which I'll leave a link for down below. She also has a few videos about supplies on her YouTube channel, including one on what the difference is between student grade and professional grade watercolor. I'll also leave a link to that too. So now that my cat has switched sides, I can talk about the next watercolors that I bought, Windsor & Newton. So these are the tubes from the student range. I have three of the primary colors and four of more neutral colors. And what I like to do and what is suggested by Emma in her classes is using dinner plates. I don't use them straight out of the tube. I put globs of them on these plates and I reactivate them as I need them. So I'll have one plate for my primary colors and I do have white there too. And the other plate is for my more neutral colors. So I do really enjoy using both styles, the tubes and the pans. But recently I've noticed how much more difficult it is to work with these cheap paints compared to my Winsor & Newton paints. So then I considered buying a more professional range. And since I do enjoy pans like this, and I already had some decent quality tubes, that I'd like to invest in some professional grade pans. So I went online, and I bought 12 Sennelia watercolor pans. I probably said that wrong too. I will say that I did pick my own colors rather than buying a pre-made 12 set tin only because I know what I'll be using them for and the colors most beneficial to me. In saying that, I will still pitch the cheap supplies against these later on to see how they compare and how much more depth I can get with colors I've handpicked myself. Okay, let's open this up now. I'm not sure if there's going to be all 12 colors in there. Uh, I was told by the company that I bought it through that three of them, I think, were on back order. But then they said that everything was shipped, so I'm not sure. We'll find out. going to be an ASMR video now <laughs> and I can't open it so much bubble wrap my goodness okay let's clean this up a little bit had to Okay, let's see what colors we got here. So I do have a lot more than 12 here, 
uh, thank you so much to Newton Art Supplies for that and they also gave me a, a pen to use as well so that is awesome thank you so much so I'll open all of these up off of camera and then we'll do some swatches uh, not all the colors that I ordered would match up with the colors on my cheap palette but I thought I would number them and try and match most of them up as well as I can but um, I don't think I'd have a match for this one number five or this one number nine so we'll just leave those two out and swatch the rest okay so first we'll do ivory black very pigmented and it blends really nicely in my opinion and now compared to this black which is a bit it's a bit well loved I've used this a lot <laughs> get some more water on there to activate it and get rid of the cat hair <laughs> You can see that the gradient isn't as smooth as it was when I was swatching the other one as soon as I put more water on it it just starts fading out straight away rather than having a nice transition there right, let's try this neutral tint now this is one of the ones that I was given as an extra and again Get rid of the cat fur. So I'm not quite sure. Oh wow, that is that is really dark. That is amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm really happy that this one got sent to me as an extra. Let's try raw sepia. Or sepia? How do you say sepia? Let me know in the comments how you say it. I use a lot of browns, especially doing uh, animal portraits. So that's why there's a lot of those earthy colours in this set that I bought. which I needed because I only have one brown uh, in this set and one brown in the Windsor & Newton as well. Alright, let's try raw umber. I think this is the one that I got two of for some reason. But that's okay. Now I think that this one might be similar to the brown that I have. But now that I've used it, I'm not quite sure. We'll do a test anyway. Okay. Warm sepia? Sepia? <laughs> now I think the closest one I have to that in my cheap palette is number five. So we'll give that a go, even though I was a bit off on the brown. Yeah, see so yeah, I'm way off on that. But it's a lot harder to tell uh, just looking at these pans on what kind of colour I'm going to get. That's why we do swatches. Yeah, so this one's a lot more red. Next we'll do a Lizarin Crimson. Oh wow, that's pretty. So the closest one I have is probably number six. So let's do gold ochre. So I was pretty spot on with that one. Both very similar. Now the equivalent that I've got in my cheap palette is one that I use a lot. 
so it was definitely something I wanted to have as a part of this more professional set. So again, very similar colours, but you can just tell like there's that definite line unless I blend it out and then once I start blending it reactivates and just doesn't look as smooth as that one. Okay, wow, I'm actually super in love with this colour. It's so pretty. Huge, huge difference when you start coming into those cooler blue colours with um, blue tints in them. These are pretty. Look at that blue, oh my gosh. I'm in love with that. I don't know what I like better, the blue or the green. My favorite color is green, so probably green. Now I did write 10 for that one, but I actually think that's gonna be closer to nine. So let's do nine. I originally wrote nine too over wrote it with 10 thinking that it would be closest to closer match but now for white I think I'll get a wash of this ivory black and see how it fares once that's dry Okay, so now that's dry, we can try out our titanium white. And guess who the idiot was that used her hair dryer to speed up the drying time and had little tiny pieces of paper fly everywhere and have to find them all and match them back up. Me, that's who, okay. Wow, that is pretty good. As far as white watercolor goes. It's pretty impressive actually. Compared to, yep, absolutely nothing. <laughs> that is a huge difference in that white. <laughs> so now that they're dry is when you can really see that difference. So the cheap ones are so much more grainy. Like, look at the difference between these reds here. They're so much more grainy than that one. Same with the blue. So they go down okay, these cheap ones, but it's when they're dry that it really shows the difference. Now I have a little drawing that I prepared. So I'm going to be doing two of these little foxes. I don't know if you can see any of my sketching on there. Oh yeah, you can. So I'll be doing one in the professional senilia, or s I don't know how to say that. Uh, and one of them in my cheap watercolors.
Okay, so there are our two paintings. I mean, they are slightly different because of my own sketch. But I'll also point out that I had different colours in each and they, as you saw in the swatches, they didn't quite match up. So I did what I could. Uh, obviously, this one is a lot more neutral colours, which is what I wanted, what I was looking for when I ordered them. But if you look closely at this one, you'll see like, you can see my brush strokes and that it's a lot more chalky and grainy after it's dried, just like how when we did the swatches. Whereas this one, it's a lot smoother and the colors wanted to blend in with each other a lot better than they did on this one. I will say though that I like the galaxy on that one better. Um, Purely because it's a lot more, I, I guess, messy and I like that look a lot better. Whereas the edges on this one just wanted to be smooth. These colours just, they, they didn't want that uh, blotchiness, which I guess I aim for when I do this kind of galaxy. Um, and also the colours, the colours didn't quite match up. So I couldn't make that same purple with those, that red and that blue. But... Overall, I think they're both good. Um, I did have to do a lot more layers on that one to get the color payoff, whereas I only had to do two, I think, on this one to have that nice deep brown there. And if you look closely, you can see that chalkiness quite a lot in that tail area there compared to the smoothness of that one. So yeah, I am pretty impressed and I look forward to using these more. Uh, if you liked this video, make sure to uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. Thank you so much. Bye.